are starting a brand new series called Jesus Period. Right? Jesus Period. And when you think about this, bakit, bakit may period? It's not a complete sentence. Okay, bakit may period sa dulo? And the, the thought is incomplete, Jesus Period. But really, Jesus Period has been around in our movement. Lalo na para sa mga uh, relatively new, the, your, relatively new dito sa Victory. Jesus Period, we've been using this for so many years. In fact, um, we we put this mostly on our banners, lalo na pag mga church plants like this, like this one. Okay, this was this was a church plant back. Uh, I, I led a team of uh, of people of leaders who church plant back then in Bulacan, and I remember that whenever we church plant in uh, certain areas, not just in Bulacan but all over the Philippines, we would always put a banner on the stage. na nakalagay Jesus period. Okay, Jesus period. And what this means for us is that really ang gusto ang gusto naming message, ang gusto nating message na may communicate to everyone is that in this movement, in this organization or in this church, there's no one or walang bida, walang masikat, walang mas magaling, but it's only Jesus Christ. Jesus period. And, and, and another thing is that one of the core values of our movement up to today for 40 years now is that the value of lordship, the value that Jesus is, has the authority over all our lives. No one else or nothing else has the authority over our lives. Kaya Jesus, period. And so we're gonna talk about, not, not sorry, balik lang ako, no? hindi, hindi like, Hindi siya Jesus plus blank, then period. Okay? Hindi siya Jesus plus whatever we fill in that blank. Yun yung, yun yung iniisip natin. But really, our movement, victory for 40 years, would always say Jesus, period. And that's why we're starting that, that brand new series. We're gonna talk about, for four weeks, we're gonna talk about the book of Colossians. And yung Colossians... Uh, it's very, it's a very short book. So kaya kung nandito ka, if you want to finish a book in just one month, okay, tapusin mo lang tong series na to and then you can, you know, post on Facebook, I finished a book. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, it's really a short uh, uh, book in the Bible. So Colossians. So let's all stand as we read this, um, the, the text. Verse 15, He is, Colossians 1 verse 15, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things. And in Him, all things hold together And He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything He might be preeminent. For in Him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of His cross. Let's bow down our heads and close our eyes. Lord, thank You for Your Word. Lord, I pray that You open our hearts, open our minds to what you want us to hear from you. And Lord, I pray that we will not walk out of this room uh, not understanding your Lordship. Thank you, Lord. We honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say, Amen, Amen. Can I sit down? All right. Just to give you a background of Colossians, of Really, what's happening? Bakit ito yung pinag-aaralan natin? Bakit, bakit ito yung kailangan natin pag-usapan for the next four weeks? Because number one, uh, yung Colossians, it's written by Paul while in pre- prison to the Colossian church. Okay? He is writing this uh, while he was in prison. And what's interesting is that Paul was writing to a people na hindi niya, never niyang namit. Not only that, hindi lang niya never na meet, but he never planted that church. Someone planted it. 
Okay? And so that's the context of this. And so you would think na sobra sigurong importante nung sulat na to, to the point na you're writing to a people that you don't even know, even met, or a church that you never planted. And so why is it so important for Paul to write this, the Colossians? And that's the reason why we're talking about because there was an attack on the Christian faith specifically targeting the deity of Jesus Christ. There was a group of people inside and outside the church who's attacking the Christian faith and saying, wait, Jesus is not God. Jesus is, you know, a mere human or probably a good teacher or a good role model, but he's not really God. And usually, uh, in, in the culture that time, if you're in, in, in their culture, what happened is, kapag meron sila, marami, so marami silang polytheistic yung, yung religion ng mga karamihan sa taga-Colosian. And then, what happened is, kapag meron silang nagustuhan na God, pag may gusto silang isang teacher or, or another deity, they would add those up to their collection of gods. Uh, so, if you're, if you're in their time, okay, nung marami silang sinaserve na God, marami silang winna-worship na God, and then when Jesus Christ was introduced to them, oh, I like Jesus Christ, huh? He died on the cross. He sacrificed on the cross. Huh? Wow, grabe. He taught uh, uh, many things to his disciples. I like him. I would add him up to all my collections of gods. And so Jesus was uh, devalued. God was devalued to a place where all lahat ng lahat ng gods nila, lahat ng ng gods nila kapantay lang ni Jesus. They were devaluing God and elevating man. Every time we devalue God and we 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 watch this, okay? It, this happens in the current uh in our current time, diba? there's, there's this one guy who was arrested multiple times trying to devalue God, trying to dance the Amanamin just for the sake that he devalues God just to elevate his art. Every time we devalue God, we try to elevate ourselves, we try to elevate man. And so that's what's happening here. Ito yung current issue na ina-address ni Paul to the church that he never met, to the church that he never planted, devaluing God and elevating man. And that's why when you read the, the, the first chapter of the Colossians, banat agad si Paul. Banat siya agad with saying, uh, God, Jesus, is the Lord of all creation. He was, parang, parang sinasabi niya na, you're devaluing Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to address that by making Jesus Christ or telling to you guys that Jesus Christ is above all creation. He has authority of, over all creations. In Colossians 1, verse 15, He is the image of the invisible God. He is the image of the invisible God, which means uh, in Greek, akon. I think dito natin nakuha yung term na icon. Okay? Akon it's the visible representation. Jesus is the visible representation of the invisible God. Which means that Jesus Christ is not just some teacher or prophet. It means that Jesus Christ is also God because he's, He represents the invisible God. Okay? I hope that's clear. And to us, you know, Filip, uh, Filipino culture, diba? we, we like, we know some people, we... we we know some of our relatives that, you know, we want to have an image. Okay, bumibili ng uh, mga picture, bumibili ng mga uh, statues and things like that. Just for the sake of, hindi, yan yung representation ni, ni God. But really, we really do, well, tayo, we don't really believe in that. Why? Because the exact representation, the visible representation of Jesus Christ, of God, the Father, is Jesus Christ. Nothing else, no one else. And he goes, to, he goes on to say that he is not just the image, but he is the firstborn of all creation. Now, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of people, when they encounter this, na nawiwindang yung mundo nila. Why? Kasi when you think about it, if Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, does that mean he is also created? 
Does that mean he is part of the creation? Then if that's the argument, then if Jesus is part of the creation, then he is not the creator. But Paul was not telling this. This hindi ito yung ibig sabihin ni Paul when he used the word for firstborn because during their time firstborn okay malaki yung responsibility ng firstborn he owns double the portion he owns the land pag namatay yung yung father niya he has the authority over over their properties over their uh, over his family and ganun kabigat yung firstborn and Paul was using that that term for firstborn to clarify and pound on that Jesus Christ is not part of the creation. He is the creator and that He has the highest authority over all creation. And He expounded this. Hindi pa, do, hindi pa na contento din si Paul. Because He expounded this even more in verse 16. Sabi niya, For by Him all things were created. By Him all things were created. In heaven, on earth, In heaven means the universe. Okay? Because during their time, heavens yung tawag nila sa stars, sa moon, sa sun. Heaven. For by Him, all things were created in the universe and on earth, here in our, in our, in our world. Visible, the physical body, the physical, um, our physical world. And invisible, the spiritual world. Yes, there's a spiritual world. And even that, Jesus created them, created that, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities, politician, president, senator, CEO, whatever, whatever um, authorities, whatever leadership position that we have, all things were created, what? Through Him, by Him. Paul was making it clear that he is the author. He has the authority over everything. And also, the reason why he said this is because to prove that God really exists and that our existence is the evidence or the proof of his existence. You want to know, you want to have an evidence or proof that God exists? Look at the person in the mirror. Or ngayon lang, tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Ah, pastor, parang nagkamali ito si Lord. Ano yung... No, but really, our existence is the proof of His existence. Paul was very clear. Jesus is not just some kind of a teacher, some kind of a good prophet or a good person or a motivational speaker, but He is God, He is beyond, He is great, He is definitely far, far away from us. Hindi natin sa ka-level, mga kapatid. For by Him, all things were created. And He goes on to end this particular verse with two words. All things were created through Him and what? For Him. For Him. We exist for Him. Now, here comes the problem. We exist, sometimes, we exist not for Him. Most of the time, we exist for, number one, this world. We exist for this world. That's why there's, there's uh, war, there's tension between the Philippines and the China. Why? Because uh, yung China, gusto nalang ariin kung ano, yung, ano man yung nasa yung in Seoul, whatever, na hindi naman talaga sa kanila. Sorry for the uh, Chinese people here, okay? That's why there's Ukraine and uh, Russia war, Russian war. That's why there's so many wars happening today because we want to live for this world. That's why there's so many, I mean, there's so many wars because of greed, because of, you know, lust for power. And another thing, di ba? We live for this world, kaya credit card is a billion dollar industry. Why? Because we want to gain the whole world. And we feel like when we have that card, we can do everything. Swipe lang na swipe. 
We want to gain the whole world. We want more achievements. We want more buildings. We want more uh, cities. We want more leadership positions. We want more great organizations. Napakadaming organizations sa mundo. Why? Because we want to exist for this world. And because we want to exist in this world and we want to preserve this world, we do everything to make it happen. We exist for this world. We exist for what the world can offer to us. We exist to make this world a better place, even at the expense of others. Not only that, we don't just exist exist for this world, but we exist for ourselves. We exist for ourselves. We 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 constantly think about what will make me happy. Is this the right person for me? Papa sayahin niya ba ako? We want to to exist for convenience. We want to uh, for self gratification, for pleasure, for self preservation. Kaya uso uso. Kaya mayaman si Bello, di ba? We want to preserve ourselves. We want to you know exist for our own gratification, for our own pleasure. There's a book uh, by Carl Truman. It's uh, the Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. And basically, so, sobrang daming topic, sobrang grabe tong book na to. And basically, what he's saying is, uh, there's a rise in the triumph of the modern self. And one of his, uh, one of, uh, in one of his, one of the pages of his book, he said this, we all live in a world in which it is increasingly easy to imagine the reality is something we can manipulate. according to our own will and desires. Okay. Parang, um, we live in a world today that we are more and more eager and passionate about manipulating the whole our world based on our will and our desires. And not something that we necessarily need to conform ourselves or pass- passively accept. Okay. We, we, we are so... Um, into this world. We are so, we, we love the world so much to the point that we, ang nangyayari is we, we, we try to impose what we want in this world and then mag-adjust yung mundo para sa atin. Not like the previous, gen- yung mga previous generations, they find meaning and then they find purpose in what's happening in the world and make sense out of it Pero ngayon, ngayon, because of the Mimi generation, because of, of so many things about loving yourself, uh, things about yourself, ngayon, iba na. Okay, I was born this way. I feel this way. Okay, ganto talaga ako, mag-adjust kayong lahat sa akin. Imagine that. And multiply that to a billion people. That's how chaotic our world is today. Because ito yung nafi-feel ko, because ito yung nararamdaman ko, ito yung emotion ko, at feeling ko ito yung, ito ako, ito talaga ako, then you guys should adjust for me. Living, existing for, our, for ourselves. And then he goes on to say that we think that human beings are called to transcend themselves, to make their lives into works of art. to take the place of God as self-creators and the inventors, not the discoverers of meaning. Our world is slowly transitioning to this. That Really, we find meaning in suffering. We find meaning in problems. We find meaning in things like that. Pero ngayon, iba na. We find meaning to what we feel. We find meaning to what we think who we are. And then, tell, and then, force people to adjust based on your, our feelings, based on what we want. Because we are existing for ourselves. But Paul is, Paul is clear. All things are created by Him, through Him, and for Him. For Him. I hope that's clear for all of us. That we exist, not for our own, for, not for this world, 
not to please or not to um, gain the whole world, but and and you know um, exist for ourselves. We exist for the enjoyment enjoyment of Jesus Christ. Now He is the Lord of all creation. Not not that not just that Paul was pounding of. Of about about the Lord of all creation, he was also talking about the Lord of all, the Lord of the new creation, the Lord of the new creation, the Lord of the new creation. Yeah. In Colossians 1 verse 18 it says, "And the head of the body, and He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything He might be preeminent." And He is the head of the body, the church, us. Okay. Um, the reason why He is the Lord of the new creation, because when we, He talks about the church, He talks about a new set, a new kind of people. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, He is a new creation. Tingnan mo ulit yung katabi mo. That is a new creation. Last nung amen, eh? amen, amen. The old has passed. Come on. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And that's why Paul was founding. And he is the head of the body, the church, the new creation. He is the Lord of the new creation. And what does it mean when we say that Jesus is the head of the body, the church, the new creation? Three things lang. Number one, he gives, he, He's the one who gives us direction. You know, this church, and, and I, I think the whole victory naman, no, all over the Philippines, yearly we have a strategic planning. Yearly we assess things about uh, how we did this year, what are our plans, anong statistics natin, because numbers don't lie. Anong direction natin for next year? What's the best strategy to reach out this certain this the students, reach out uh, the families and things like that? And we can uh, go on and plan and 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 think about the direction of the whole example, Victory Makati. But if that is not what God wants us to go, where God wants us to go, we will not go. If hindi yun yung direction the Lord. And all of these strategies, uh, with all of these things happening, we would say, no, Lord, okay. Ito gusto namin gawin, pero kung ayaw mo to, Lord, we'll go with your direction. And that's why every year, we start our year with prayer and fasting. Because we believe that Jesus is the head of the body. Hindi si Pastor Dennis, hindi si Pastor Steve, hindi si Pastor Mariam, or si Pastor Lijay. We are here to serve you guys, but at the end of the day, Jesus is the head of this church. He directs us wherever He wants us to go. Not only that, we depend on Him. Dependency. We are not dependent on anyone. We're not dependent on a politician. We're not dependent on a, an, an, outside, on an outside organization that funds us or whatever. We depend solely, purely in Jesus Christ. We depend on Him. No one else. And not only that, we are devoted to Him. Our devotion is to Jesus Christ alone. Imagine this, if the body, it's, yun naman yung illustration ni Paul, eh. if the body, if my hands is not devoted to my, he- my head, my mind, which yung head ko yung nagdadirect sa kung anong gusto gawin ng pa ako, ng kamay ko, or ng every part of my body, imagine this, your hands is not devoted to your head. Kahit anong utos mo, ayaw nang gawin. Okay. Pero yung friend mo, pag inutusan yung kamay nyo, gagawin. That's weird, di ba? And Paul was saying that, that the, he is the head of the body. The church, that our devotion is to Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. He is the Lord of, of, of the new creation. Not only that, He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in everything He might be preeminent. 
Again, inulit na naman yung firstborn. There's something about the firstborn because yun nga, during that time, firstborn means authority. He has the highest authority. He is king. He has uh, the lordship and everything. And that's why he's saying that the firstborn, ang ibig sabihin ng the firstborn from the dead, that in him, without him, we will remain dead. Now, balik lang ako ng konti from last Sunday. Resurrection. Okay? Remember that when Jesus died, anong, imi- anong ginawa immediately ng mga disciples, lalo na si Peter? They went back to their old life. Naging fisherman, tapos yung iba, yung dati nilang trabaho. And that's the power. When, that's what Paul is saying when he said, if not for Jesus Christ, we will all go back to our old lives, to our old selves. But because of Jesus Christ, we can move forward, we can follow Him, and we don't have to remain dead in our sins because He is the firstborn from the dead. The Lord of all creation, the Lord of the new creation, and because He is the Lord of all creation and the new creation, last day, as we call the music team, He is the Lord of our life. He is the Lord of of our life. Colossians 1 verse 19, For in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Now, during the Old Testament times, you would, you would notice that the presence of God would not really dwell among the people, His people. So what happened is, what's happening is, may, may tent sila, may most holy place, okay, may priest na magsasacrifice, and then bababa yung presence ni Lord at aalis ulit. In fact, nandun lang yung presence ni Lord. Doon sa most holy place lang. He would, he would go down and then aalis. And even yung mga some instances sa, sa biblical characters, like si, si Moses, the burning bush, nasa bush lang, aalis. Magpapakita si Lord, magmamanifest, aalis. He does not dwell. Why? Because prior to Jesus' sacrifice, we are still in our sins. And He can't really dwell among us. Because of sin. But in Christ, for in Him, all the fullness of God was pleased. He's now pleased to dwell among us because of the finished work of Christ. You don't have to worry how messed up you are. You don't have to worry how dirty you are. Lord, grabe, dirty ko today. Ang makasalanan ko, Lord, siguro hindi ka nagdudwell sa akin ngayon. No. Now we can have our confidence. We can have confidence that He dwells in us despite of our ugliness, despite of our sins, despite of our iniquities in Him. Now, I skipped a verse kanina, if you noticed. We are already in 19, and isang verse na lang 20, but I skipped this verse, 1 Colossians 1 verse 17. And I think, sa akin lang, personally, if there's one really, when I was reading this 15 to 20, this is one of my favorite lines na sinabi ni Paul to the Colossian Church. And He is before all things. And he, in Him, all things hold together. Which means, Paul was saying, if not for Jesus Christ, everything will fall apart. Do you know that our galaxy Milky Way is just in the right place para hindi tumama sa ibang galaxies. Spinning at the right time para hindi bumangga sa ibang galaxies. Hindi lang yun. Our solar system, all the planets in our solar system is in the right orbit para hindi magtamaan at para, you know, they have gravitational pull. So kapag masyado silang malapit to other planets, mag- bubunggo-bunggoan sila, pag masyado naman malayo, baka wala na tayong solar system kasi magdi-drift apart. But they are just in constant, in, in, in the right place at the right time. Not only that, alam nyo ba yung Earth? And I'm sure, lalo na yung mga science guy dito, I'm sure, you know that the Earth is just in the right orbit around the sun, not too far, not too near, because if we are so near from the sun, we will all burn. If we're too far, the earth will drift away and we will all freeze. 
He holds all things together. Not only that, kapag yung earth natin, masyadong mabilis yung spin, lahat tayo titilapon. Can you imagine that? Ooh. Pag naman masyadong mabagal, sobrang daming calamities yung mangyayari. And this was Paul saying, He holds all things together. Can a president do that? Can a world leader do that? Do that? It's just God. Hindi lang Milky Way. Hindi lang solar system. Hindi lang yung mundo natin. Alam nyo ba that even in your own body, there's a protein called laminin. Okay. Are you familiar with laminin? Laminin is a, it's a protein that is responsible to hold the cells and the tissues and the organ in its place. And kapag yung la, pag sobrang pag may may pag wala tayong laminin, what will happen is yung mga organs natin because we're moving, because we're constantly on the on the move and sila din naggumagalaw without the laminin, all of these organs, tissue cells would you know, magbabangga-banggaan sila, will cause internal bleeding. <laughs> I mean, la, I mean magmamalfunction talaga yung katawan natin. Laminin holds all things, all cells tissues and organs in our body. And you know what? What's amazing about the laminin protein, ito yung naging, medyo naging science ano na to, ano? Ito yung picture ng, na, ito yung molecular structure ng laminin protein. Looks familiar. It's a shape of a cross. In fact, this is This laminin is called the glue of life. It glues us together. In fact, pag, mali, pag wala tayong laminin, yung muscle natin will not function well, will not, will not even grow. We cannot even move and walk and run and do the things that we need to do. Because this is the glue of life. And it looks like a cross. And in fact, pag tinignan po natin sa microscope, ganito po yung niya. It's in the shape of a cross. And I don't think this is coincidence. I think that God deliberately did this to remind us. And Paul was also Paul, Paul also wrote about this in the in Colossians 1 verse 20. And through him to reconcile to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven making peace by the blood of his cross. It's through the cross that our lives will be put together and not fall apart. It's through that laminin. It's through that cross by the blood of His cross our lives will not fall apart. And you know, as we begin this series, yes, intro pa lang to. <laughs> we have uh, the, the next Sundays. Really, the question that I want us to think about for the next four weeks as we talk about Jesus' period is that is He the Lord of your life? He is the Lord of all the creations. He is the Lord of the new creation. But he is He the Lord of your life? Because if he, Jesus is not our Lord, our lives will fall apart. Our lives will fall apart. Because He holds all things together for us. So that's the question that I want us to take home for today. Are there any areas in our lives lives that is falling apart? Are there any areas in our lives that it seems like it's not in order? It feels like it's not in its proper place. Jesus is, Jesus is saying to us, if I'm not your Lord, your life will fall apart without me, without the cross, without the blood of, without my blood shed on the cross, our lives will fall apart. Are there any areas of your life that's falling apart? Are there any areas in your life that Jesus is not yet 
supreme, have the authority, preeminent. Is He not your Lord? Let's all bow down our heads and close our eyes. And then we'll worship. Lord, thank you that you are the Lord of all creation. You are the Lord of the new creation. And because of that, you are our Lord. And Lord, thank you that maybe there are people here na it, it's it's still hard to comprehend this message. Still hard to take this message for us. Lord, you're not disappointed. Lord, you still love us. And wherever we are right now, Lord, you want us to bring to a place where everything is surrendered to you. You want to journey us. You want to be with us. You're not like a God na, hindi, ako yung Lord dito, halika dito, ako lang dapat. No, you're not like that. You're not forceful. Really, we have come. You're you're allowing us to come to to a moment of repentance, to a moment of enlightenment. You are revealing to us right now that you you Lord are the Lord of all. Is the Lord of all creation. Is the Lord of the new creation. And the same Lord who created the universe, the earth, the invisible, the visible whether dominions, whether, whether rulers, whether powers, authorities, you are the same God. You are the same Lord who's inviting us to be under your Lordship, to be under your presence, to be under your rule. Lord, thank you. Because under your Lordship, our lives will come together there will be no area of our lives that will fall apart. Lord, because of that, we're just grateful. Because of that, we just want to worship you, honor you in this place. So let's all stand as we worship God.